Hello Internet, welcome to the channel. My name is Frankie and today we are playing Planet Zoo Franchise Mode and we're continuing our Franchise Zoo Little Asia. And today we're going to be building for one of my favourite animals of all time. When I was a child it was number one and it's still pretty high up on my list nowadays too. We are building for the Flamingos. In this game the Greater Flamingo is surprisingly picky. They do not like to be seen by the public. So the first thing that I'm doing is creating a nice private little shelter for them to be able to escape to rather than being on show at all times. I'm going to have their feeding station in here, so their food bowl, and I just want it to be a bit private and kind of at the back of the enclosure just so that they have somewhere to go. Just like when I built the red panda house in the previous episode, I'm going to be using building materials entirely from the India theme pack. Now. In the last episode, when I built the Red Panda House, I built it rather large. In fact, I think I built it a bit too big. So this is a little bit smaller. It's more appropriate for the species that we've got in here. I'm not going to bother going back and changing the size of the Red Panda House. I'll just leave it for now. But I wanted to make sure that this was a bit more appropriately sized. Also, something that I learned when I was building the Red Panda House is about the grid and the grouping system. I accidentally built the panda house on two separate groups. This time I'm making sure that everything is joined to the same group, meaning that when placing items, it all locks together nice and easily, making for a much more fluid experience. Due to the tiling formations that there are in this game, I ended up getting rid of this kind of porch area and instead moving the archway inside and creating a little slope for our flamingos to come down instead. I do like the idea of having this porch kind of thing on the building. However, there isn't a T-shape kind of tile slot, I guess, for the roof, which would be ideal, but it's not an issue. I think it still ends up looking pretty nice with just a little slope for the uh, flamingos to walk down. And it still allows access for our keepers, it allows them to get into the enclosure and fill up any of the enrichment items and stuff. But like I said earlier, the food bowl is going to be inside, so they don't have to go too far in order to make sure the flamingos are actually fed. I'm finding myself using the advanced move tools a lot more when building this habitat enclosure house thing. All the words. Um, I'm really getting used to the advanced move tools now and it is proving to be really useful. Once you do get the hang of them on console, it is so useful. They're not, they seem quite daunting to begin with, but once you practice with them a few times and you just learn the ins and outs, it becomes really useful. So I would urge anyone playing on console to familiarize yourself with these controls. It'll make everything a lot easier. When it comes to adding decorations to this building, I'm keeping it nice and simple, just like with the Red Panda House. The staff buildings are a bit more extravagant and decorated, which I will do at some point with some uh, animal houses. But for now, I'm keeping it simple and focusing on the enclosure itself. With that being said, I decided to add two hanging lanterns outside on these nice little wooden, I don't know what you call them, arms or something for hanging out the lights. Uh, yeah, I had two lights outside above the archway so that the flamingos know where they're going at night. And there's also going to be a couple of these lanterns um, hung up inside as well. I'm also going to add this little trim to just under the tiling. And I'm going to run this round at least the front of the building. I did consider doing it all the way around, but the rest of the building isn't going to be seen by uh, anyone but the staff. So I'm not going to bother. Especially as I intend on surrounding the building with trees once the enclosure is done to make it look like it is in a jungle or forest. The default colour for these building pieces is quite bright so I had to take some time to tone it down a little bit and make it a bit closer to what our sandstone brick colour is. Now full disclaimer, I am colourblind and I do struggle with matching colours. I know this isn't anywhere near the same but it's, in my opinion, less different than it was before so kind of happy with that and the last thing I do in terms of decoration on this building is trying to figure out windows most of them are way too big and they're going to be for big temple like buildings or something that you might want to build as a centerpiece for your zoo uh, I did manage to find some smaller um, windows though and also these posters they're pretty awesome and will be used at other points maybe on our entrance or on the side of um, shops and stuff 
But for now, I'm just adding a little bit of an overhang to the tile roof because it looks a bit weird how it just stops right there. This looks much better having a bit of an overhang and then adding two simple windows just to the front of the building as it doesn't really matter having them on the back because like I said, we only really want the visitor scene parts of the building to be extra fancy. And with those finishing touches, I was quite happy with how this building was looking. So I think it's time to move on to the rest of the enclosure. And more specifically, it's time to start making another custom fence. This time I'm going to be using a concrete pillar and I'm going to line this up with some of the fence posts that are already in place because we outlined this enclosure with a fence beforehand, one of the in-game barriers. I'm just going to place this concrete post inside the uh, barrier that's already there and then I'm going to use a piece of chain link fencing to try and bridge the gap between this new post and where the next one would be and I have a little bit of trouble with it mainly because its length means that we'd have to duplicate the item or find a smaller version of it and try and overlay it to reach the next post. I play about with that for a while and it never looks right it just always looks a bit naff but it doesn't work quite as well as I want it to. So instead, I just settle on a shorter fence panel. It by no means actually has to match the barrier that's already in place. I don't know why I was playing about with it for so long. Why I didn't consider this sooner. Just make shorter fences. Yes, you have to copy and paste a few more times than you would otherwise. But I don't know. It, it just works a lot better. I don't know why I hadn't thought of that beforehand. And then just like I'd done previously in the Red Panda Habitat build, all I have to do is copy and paste the fence going round the enclosure until I'm happy with the layout and then place a null barrier to make sure that no animals would actually be able to leave the enclosure. Now, when it came to actually placing the door to this enclosure, I had an utter nightmare. It was so fiddly, I just could not get it in the right place. I kept having to go back and forth, trying different positions and stuff, deleting different parts of the building and re-establishing my null barrier. Don't know why it took me so long. Uh, it was really just a quite stupid mistake, but I did get there in the end. I'm not going to bore you with all the footage though, because it was at least 10 minutes trying to sort out this door. Yeah, don't do that. that that's stupid. It took way too long. Once the door was in place though, I decided I was going to do a little bit of decorating, and I did this Indian themed awning above it, and a nice little tapestry hanging, I guess. And it looks a bit odd how it's just suspended in midair. So I added a couple concrete posts to support it as well, just to uh, make the uh, staff members have a bit of a nicer looking entrance, I guess. I know I keep saying that I'm going to focus mainly on what the visitors can see, but you know, if you work at a zoo, you want to see some nice things too. So every now and then I will spice up what the staff are dealing with as well, I guess. Maybe. We'll see. Now that both the perimeter of the enclosure and the flamingo house is ready, it's time to get out our terrain stamp and start carving away at the ground. Obviously, flamingos are birds that like a lot of water. They like room for wading about in the water and, of course, swimming a little bit as well. So I start by using the large cylinder terrain stamp tool and just get rid of almost all of the ground. I go round the perimeter of the enclosure, which will leave a small patch in the middle because I'm just following the outer edge. And this small patch actually creates a nice little island that I'm going to leave for the flamingos to get to where they can have their enrichment items and obviously a little bit of land because they do actually need somewhere to stand. Next, I rather messily try to create a slope so that the flamingos can actually leave their house. They need to be able to get into the rest of the enclosure and the staff is actually going to need to be able to get from the flamingo house to the main island if we're to give them any enrichment. Now there is a lot of playing about when it comes to doing the terrain in this enclosure. There's a lot of smoothing, a lot of changing of levels. I don't want all of the water to be deep so I'm going to create some raised areas as well so that they can walk about rather than having to full on swim in the water. It's just a process that it requires quite a lot of time, just back and forth with different terrain brushes and stamps and stuff, trying to alter it till till I'm happy, basically. Which, it did take a while, but it, it ends up being quite a simple finish as well. But you know, it's exactly what the flamingos need at the end of the day, so I'm quite happy with it. And once I am happy with it, there's only really one thing left to do, and that is to fill it with water and see what it's going to look like with the flamingos in there. And I think that this island in the middle kind of gives it a oasis vibe, which is pretty cool. 
Um, something else that I did here was I altered the color of the water. Automatically it comes out this nice bluish semi-transparent color, but you can actually alter it. So I went onto it and chose it, uh, changed it to tropical. There was one building piece that I had spied earlier, which was a small Indian temple that I knew straight away that I wanted to be in this enclosure. I want to try and start incorporating some buildings from Asia into these enclosures as well, just to make it feel a bit more themed. And I don't know, I feel like this actually suits flamingos, the kind of place for them to just walk through. That sounds really stupid, but you know, I, I think it will work for the flamingos. Next, it was time to get the flamingos in there so that we could actually start to adjust the environment in terms of the plants and the terrain to their specific needs. And for some reason, the animal market was full of capybaras but had no flamingos. It took me ages to be able to secure any flamingos for the zoo. And even when I did, I only started out with two males for like, I don't know, at least half an hour of gameplay. There was just male flamingos. So, yeah, people of the animal market realm, or people who are also playing franchise mode even, start breeding your flamingos and put them on the animal market. Once we had finally secured ourselves some flamingos, I started to add the enrichment items and bedding and food bowls, stuff that we're actually going to need in order to keep these animals alive, I guess. <laughs> We'd unlocked a few enrichment items from having researched various other animals, the red panda, for instance, unlocked the, uh, what's it called, the ground scent marker, something like that. There were a few things that have been unlocked from the red panda and a couple other animals that I had in a previous zoo that I was using to get conservation credits. So I was able to place those around. And of course, we needed to add a sprinkler. That's pretty important for the flamingos. And I know that at some point they're going to have a fountain. And I think that will go pretty nicely in front of the uh, doorway, the archway. It's not so much a fountain as it is more of a waterfall kind of thing that is shaped like an archway. So I think it will lend itself to that pretty nicely. And with the arrival of my two gorgeous male flamingos, it was time to really get to work on the terrain. What we have to do is select the animal and then go over to their terrain tab or plant tab and select the option that you want to change first, I guess. In this case, I wanted to start work on the terrain. So I went down to the options that were in red, selected one, and started to remedy the fact that it was in red. And in this case, it was time to introduce a lot more soil, replacing the sand, because apparently there was too much sand in this enclosure. I guess that has come from the construction process of getting rid of loads of the ground and making the waterways and stuff. So yeah, it was time to apply a bunch of soil and maybe a little bit more rock and stuff until these birds were happy. Once they were happy with the terrain coverage, it was time to start adding plants. And that's done the exact same way as the terrain. You select the animal that you wish to, well, check the requirements of, go along to their environment tab, and then you can select one of the continent buttons, which will bring up all of the biome and content specific plants that you can place in this enclosure. Now, I love adding loads of plants to the enclosures. I think it is one of the best ways to make it look like a natural and living space. However, I accidentally went a bit over the top here. I started with a couple trees at the back, which is completely fine. And then I created a small bunch of plants that I wanted to copy and paste around the perimeter to make it look a bit less plain. And to do the copy and pasting thing, you need to come out of the tab that allows you to see your animal's environment requirements. And by the time that I'd finished copy and pasting around the perimeter, the coverage was way over what the flamingos desired. And therefore I had to delete loads of stuff. So this process actually took quite a lot longer than it should have, going back and forth, deleting plants and stuff that I, it was a shame because I really liked the look of it with loads and loads of plants. But I guess these guys wouldn't be gathering together in the jungle. They would be in more exposed areas and such. So it does make sense, but you know, it may not look as nice, but whatever. Something else to bear in mind with flamingos is they get stressed really easily, and this affects their welfare. So if you want to maintain a decent welfare score for these guys, you're gonna make you're gonna need to make sure that they don't get too stressed, which is exactly why I built the flamingo house at the back of the enclosure, somewhere for them to escape to, and why the island is quite far away from the front fence, because then the guests aren't too close to them. But something else you can do is, 
in the, uh, I think it's the facilities tab, and then down by the education area, or no wait, it's in the security section. There is a sign that it says keep quiet. If you sink this into the ground below the paths, the guests still will take notice of it and they will keep quiet. The reason I sink it into the ground is because it's massive and ugly. I didn't film this section, unfortunately, uh, but it has the effect. It stops the guests from being too loud and therefore stressing out the animals, meaning that their welfare can stay at a good rate. This is a really good thing to do that I would keep in mind if you deal with animals that get stressed quite easily fairly often. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a good little tip or trick that I think everyone should be doing if you've got stressy animals like this. Now, even after deleting all the plants that I had, it still wasn't quite good enough for the flamingos. And for the first time, I decided not to give the animals in the enclosure a 100% score on their environment, which I feel bad about but it's just going to look awful otherwise it didn't affect their welfare too much they were still fairly happy and lived good lives but you know I, it still nags me a little bit that i didn't get it to 100 percent shortly after doing all the plant stuff uh, my vet research had completed to a point that meant that i could place the water fountain archway that i was talking about earlier so i placed it down in front of the house and i think it looks really nice it kind of reminds me how if you go to a swimming pool you need to kind of take a shower first. I'm, it's kind of like a little rinse station for the flamingos before they go into the main pool. Whilst I understood that I needed to get rid of all the plants and stuff, there was too much of that, I couldn't help myself but place a couple large boulders on the island. The island just looked way too plain, so I thought adding these big boulders with the algae growing on top of them would add a little bit of colour and make it look a bit more interesting in terms of shape and stuff because it was quite boring at the moment. And whilst I didn't record it, I did also end up adding a couple waterborne plants such as floating lily pads and some reeds by the rocks. And with that, I just needed to add a few more flamingos, which had finally come to the animal market after it being so barren early on. And then the enclosure was done. 